Hey guys, I'm back. Today I'm going to read Exodus 5 to 10, Proverbs 8, and Psalm 101. Let's get started. Afterward, Moses and Aaron went and said to her, Thus says the Lord God, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness. But Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord, that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? I do not. I do not know the Lord, and moreover, I will not let Israel go. Then they said, Who is one of the Hebrews is met with us? This let us go three days' journey into the world, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. Let's be four parts with pestilence or with the sword. Now the king of Egypt said to them, Moses and Aaron, why do you take the people away from their work? You know, back to your bones. And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people land on our bony, and you make them rest from their bones. The same day, Pharaoh commanded the taskmaster of the people and their foreman, You shall no longer give the people sword to make bricks. As in the past, let them go and gather straw for themselves. But the number of bricks they made in the past, you shall impose on them. You, know, you shall by no means reduce it, for they are idle. Therefore they cry, Let us go and offer sacrifice to our God. Let heavy work be laid on the men, that they may labor at it, and pay no regard to lying words. So the taskmaster and the four men of the people uh, went out and said to the people, Thus says Pharaoh, I will not give you a straw. Go and get you a yourselves, wherever you can find it. Uh, your work will not be reduced in the least. So the people were scattered throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble for straw. The taskmasters were urgent, saying, Complete your work. Your daily task each day, as when there was straw. Then the whole man of the Hebrew leader, who Pharaoh's taskmasters had set him, were beaten and were asked, Why have you not done what you talk what you task of making bricks today and yesterday, as in the past? <clears throat> you and the former of the Hebrew is people of Israel. The Israel came and cried to Pharaoh, Why do you treat your servants like this? And your stories given to your servants. Yet they say to us, Make bricks. And behold, your servants are being, like the fault is in your own people. But he said, Be, You are idle, you are idle. And that is why he said, Let's go and sacrifice to the Lord. Go now and work, and a straw will be given you. And that you must give, still deliver the same number of bricks. The four men and the people of Israel saw that they were in trouble when they said, You shall by no means reduce your number of bricks, you daily toss each day. They met Moses and Aaron, who were waiting for them when they came out from Pharaoh. And I said, The Lord look on you and judge, because you have made a stink in the sight of Pharaoh and his sons. Then I put a sword in the hand to kill us. Then Moses turned to the Lord and said, Hello, oh why did you have you done evil to this people? Why did you ever send me? For well, since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil to this people, and you have not delivered your people at all. But the Lord said to Moses, Now you shall see what I will do to them. With a, <clears throat> for with a strong hand, he will send he will send them out, and with a strong hand he will drive them out of his land. But God spoke to Moses and Aaron, and Moses and Aaron said, And the Lord, I appear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, as God Almighty. As God Almighty, but by me, but by my name, the Lord, I did not make, I did not make myself known to them. I also established my covenant to give them the land of Canaan, the land in which they lived as their journeys. Moreover, I have heard the groaning of my the people of Israel, in whom the Egyptians told their slaves. And I have remembered my covenant, say to say of Israel and the Egyptians told their slaves. And I have remembered my covenant, say therefore to the people of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, of the Egyptians, and I will deliver you from slavery to them, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great acts of judgment. And I will take you to be my people, and I will be your God. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God, who has brought you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will bring you into the land that I swore to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to you for a possession. I am the Lord. And this spoke thus to the people of Israel, that they did not listen to Moses, because there was broken spirit and harsh slavery. So the Lord said to Moses, Go and tell Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to let the people of Israel go out of this place. And Moses said to Lord, you have the people of Israel, and have not listened to me. Now then shall Pharaoh listen to me. And I, well, I am of uncircumcised lips. But the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, and gave him a charge about the people of Israel, and about Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, to bring the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Uh, these are the heads of their father's houses. Yeah, the sons of Reuben, the first one of Ezra, Hanok, Palu, Hezron, and Kami. These are the clans of Reuben, the sons of Simi, Gemil, Jamin, Oha, Jakin, Zohar, and Shul, the son of Canaan. These are the clans of Simi. These are the names of the sons of Levi according to their generation. Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. The years of their life of Levi being 137 years. The sons of Gershon, Libni, and Shimei. My day clans. The sons of Kohath, Amram, Ishar, Hebron, and Israel. 
The length of the days of the life of Kerr hath been 133 years. And the sons of Mary are Molly and Mushy. He sent the plans of Levites according to their generation. Amram took his wife Jochebed and his father's sister, and she bore him Aaron and Moses the years of the life of Amram in 137 years. The sons of Israel Korah, Nepheg, and and Zitri. The sons of Israel, Mishael, Elzaphan, and Zithri. Aaron took Aaron as his wife Elisha, the daughter of Amenadah, the daughter of Amenadah, and the sister of Nasha. And she bore him Nadab, Abihu, Elzar, and Ithamar. The sons of Korah, Asir, Elkanah, and Abisa. He sent the plans of the Korahites. Elzar, Aaron's son, took as his wife one of the daughters of Putiel, and she brought him finest. And these on the hands of the fathers of the houses of the Levites by their plans. These are the Aaron and Moses to whom the Lord said, and the other people of Israel from the land of Egypt by their host. It was they who spoke to Pharaoh, spoke to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, about bringing out the people of Israel from Israel. And this Moses and this Aaron. On the day when the Lord spoke to Moses in the land of Egypt, the Lord said to us, I am the Lord, tell Pharaoh, king of Egypt, all that I say to you, but no. And Moses said to the Lord, Behold, I am of uncircumcised lips, and all Pharaoh listen to me. And the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you like, like God to Pharaoh, Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron shall be a prophet. You shall speak of all, you shall speak all that I command you. And your brother Aaron shall tell Pharaoh to let the people of Israel go out of go out of his land. And I will harm Pharaoh, even though and though I multiplied my signs and wonders in the land of Egypt, Pharaoh will not listen to you. And I will lay my hand on Egypt and bring my house, my people with the children of Israel, out of the hand of Egypt by a great act of judgment. The Egyptians shall know that I am the and then I stretch out my hand against it, and bring out the people of Israel from his mouth. Moses and Aaron did so, and he did just as the Lord commanded. Now Moses was 80 years old, and Aaron 82 years old, and they spoke to Pharaoh. They learned the Lord's bread to Moses and Aaron. Well, Pharaoh says, So you prove yourselves by walking a miracle. Then he shall say to Aaron, Take your stuff and cast it down before Pharaoh, that it may become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did just as the Lord commanded. And Aaron cast down his staff before Pharaoh and his servants, and it became a serpent. And Pharaoh summoned the wise men and the sorcerers, and they, the magicians of Egypt, and said, so Did the same by the secret elves. And each man cast down his staff, and they became serpents. And Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. And so, still Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he would not listen to the prayers that the Lord had said. And the Lord's dimension, Pharaoh's heart is hardened, he refused to let her heal her go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning, as he is going out to the water. Stand on the bank of the mountain, you, and take in your hand the staff that turned into a serpent. And you shall say to the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, sent me to you, saying, I oh, he forgot that they may serve me in the wilderness. But so far, you have not obeyed. Thus says the Lord, by this you shall know that I am the Lord. Behold, with the staff that is in my hand, I will throw the water that is in the mouth, and it shall turn into fire. The fish in the Nile shall die, and the Nile will stink, and the Egyptians will grow weary of drinking water from the Nile. And the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Take your staff and stretch out your hand into the waters of Egypt. Over there it was their canals and their ponds, and all their pools of wood, so that they may become black, and there shall be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, even in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. And Moses and Aaron did the Lord as the Lord commanded. In the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants, he lifted up his staff, and lifted up the staff and struck the water in the mouth, and all the water in the mouth turned to blood. And the fish in the Nile died, and the Nile stank, so that the Egyptians could not drink water from the Nile. There was blood throughout all the land of Egypt, but the magicians of Egypt did the same by their sea God. The Pharaoh's heart remained hard, and he would not listen to them. Uh, as the Lord had said, the Pharaoh turned and went into his house, and he did not t- even take this to her. And all the Egyptians dug along the Nile for water to drink, and they could not drink the water of the Nile. Seven full days passed after the Lord had struck the Nile. And the Lord said to Moses, Go into Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, uh, Let my evil go, and that they may set me. If you refuse to let them go, behold, I'll plague all your country with frogs. And I will shall swarm with frogs, and shall come up into your house, and into your bedroom, and into your bed, and on your bed, and into the house of your servants and your people, and into your ovens, and all your needy bowls. The frogs shall come up upon you, and on your people, and on all your servants. And the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, stretch out your hand with the staff, with your staff over the rivers, over the canals, and over the pools, to make frogs come up on the land of Egypt. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, 
and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. Now the magicians did the same by the sea grass, and it made frogs come up on the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called Moses and Mary and said, He was the Lord to take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I'll let the people go to sacrifice the Lord, to the Lord. Moses said to Pharaoh, Be pleased to command me when I am to plead before you and for yourself, uh, for your people, that the frogs may be cut off from you and your houses and be left only in the mouth. And I said, Tomorrow, God is the he has it used, you say, so that you may know that there is no one like the Lord our God. Lord our God, the frogs shall go away from you and your houses and your servants and your people. You shall be left only in the mouth. So Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh. And Moses cried out to the Lord about the frogs, as he had agreed with Pharaoh. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses. The frogs died out in the houses. The, the courtyards and the fields, and they gathered them together in heaps, and the land stank. And when Pharaoh saw that there was a respite, he hardened his heart and would not listen to them. And the Lord said, And the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your staff and strike the dust of the earth, so that it may become nice in all the land of Egypt. And they did so. And it's just on his head, his staff, and struck the dust of the earth. And there were gnats on man and beast. And all the dust of the earth became gnats in all the land of Egypt. And the magicians tried to buy their secret house to reduce gnats, but they could not. So there were gnats on man and beast. And the magician said to Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. My first heart was hard, and he would not listen, listen to me, as the Lord had said. And the magician said, Then the Lord said to me, Right up early in the morning, and present yourself. To bear as he goes out to the water and say to him, Thus is the Lord, let my people go that they may serve me. Or else, if you know, Lord, not let my people go. I will send swarms of flies on you and your servants and your people, and into your houses, and this house of the Egyptians shall be filled with swarms of flies. And this is the ground on which they stand. And that day, well, I will set apart the land of Gosh, and where my people go, so that no swarms of flies shall be there. Uh, that you may know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. So I shall put a division between my people and your people. My people and your people. And tomorrow the sign shall happen. And the Lord did so. And came great swarm of flies into the house of Pharaoh and into his servants' houses. Uh, throughout all the land of Egypt, the land was ruined by the swarms of flies. Then Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron and said, Go, sacrifice to your God within the land. But Moses said, It would not be right to do so. For the offerings we shall sacrifice to the Lord our God, an abomination to the Egyptians. If we sacrifice offerings abominable to the Egyptians before their eyes, will they not stone us? You must go three days' journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God, as he tells us. <laughs> tells us. And so Pharaoh said, How oh, about you go to sacrifice to the Lord your God, the Lord God in the wilderness? Only you must not go very far away. Plead for me. And Moses said, Behold, I am going out from you, and I will plead with the Lord that swarms of life may depart from Pharaoh. Uh, so, so I said, only let not Pharaoh cheat again by not letting the people go sacrifice to the Lord. <clears throat> so Moses went out from Pharaoh and prayed to the Lord. And the Lord did as the Lord, Moses, Moses asked, and removed his swarms of flies from Pharaoh and from his servants, from his people, and well, not one remained. But Pharaoh hardened his heart this time, I said, and did not let the people go. Then the Lord said to Moses, go unto Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, so says all, the God of the Hebrews, not let people go that they may serve me. But if you refuse to let them go and still hold them, and hold the hand for them, will fall with a very severe plague upon your livestock that are in the field, the horses, the donkeys, the camels, the herds, and the flock. But the Lord will make a distinction between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt, so that nothing of all that belongs to the people of Israel shall shall die. And the Lord said at time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord will do the same in the land. And the next day the Lord did the same. All the livestock of the Egyptians died, but not one of the livestock of the people of Israel died. And Pharaoh said, And behold, not one of the livestock of Israel was dead. Uh, the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people go. And the Lord said to Moses, Take handfuls of soot from the kiln, and let Moses throw, in, throw them in there. Uh, in the sight of her, it shall become fine dust over all the land of Egypt, and become boils breaking out in souls on many bees throughout all, throughout all the land of Egypt. So they took soot from the kiln and stood before her, and they measured through it in the air. And it was, then they became boils breaking out in souls on many bees. And the magicians could not stand before this because of the boils. 
the boy came upon the magicians and upon all the Egyptians. Now the Lord hunted the hunter fair, and he did not listen to them. And as the Lord spoke to Moses, and the Lord said to Moses, Why come early in the morning and present yourself before Pharaoh and say to him, Thus is the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, let my people go, that they may serve me. For this time I will send all of the plague, and all my plagues on you yourself, and on your servants and on your people. So that you may know that there is no one like me in all the earth. For by now I could have put out my hand and struck you and your people with pestilence. So you would be cut off from the earth. But for the earth's purpose I raise you up to show you my power, and that my name may be proclaimed in all in all the earth. You are still exalting yourself against me, and will not let them go. About this time tomorrow, I will cause heavy, very heavy rain to fall. Very heavy hail to fall, such as never has been in Egypt from the day it has been founded until now. May I therefore send the annual livestock and all that you have in your field to, and to save shelter for every man and beast that is in the field and is not brought home, will die when the hail hits fails on them. Then whoever feared the word of the Lord and the servants of the Lord, whoever his slaves and his livestock into the houses, but whoever did not pay attention, to the word of the Lord, left his slaves and his livestock in the field. And the Lord said uh, to my stretch out your hand toward heaven, and that they may be hell in all the land of Egypt, and men and beasts in every kind of the field and the land of Egypt. And I just stretched out a soft toward him, and the Lord said, Thunder in him, and the fire ran down to the earth, and the Lord rained, uh, rained hell upon the land of Egypt. There was hell and fire flashing continually in the midst of the hail. Very heavy hail, such as had never been in all the land ages since they became a nation. The hail struck down everything that was in the field in all the land of the land of Egypt, both men and beasts. And the hail struck down every plant of the field and broke every tree of the field. Only, only in the land of Goshen, where the people of the town were, was there no hail. And Pharaoh sent and called Moses and Aaron, and said to them, This time I have I have seen the Lord in the right, and I and my people are in the wrong. Say with the Lord, we with the Lord, for there is, for there is no being enough of God's thunder in hell. I will let you go, and you shall stay very long. Most said to him, as soon as I have, I have gone out of the sea, I have stretched out my hands to the Lord. And the thunder will cease, and there we shall be, will be no more hell, so that you may know that the earth is too for the Lord. I for you and yourself, I know that you do not yet fear the Lord God. And then Moses went out of the country, went out of the sea from Pharaoh and stretched out his hands to the Lord. And the thunder and hail ceased, and the rain no longer poured on the, upon the earth. And when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunder had ceased, he sinned yet again and hardened his heart. And he and his son, so the heart of Pharaoh, so the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people, he will let it go. And just as the Lord has spoken Moses, so he can do this. And the Lord said to Moses, Go into Pharaoh. I have for I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants. And I may show these signs of mine, and um, that you may tell in the hearing of your son and of your grandson how I felt, how I have dealt harshly with the Egyptians, what signs, and what signs I have done among them. And that you may know that I am the Moses and Aaron were. So Moses and Aaron were, went into Pharaoh and said to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, how long will you refuse to humble yourself? Oh, fully, let my people go that they may serve me. Oh, if you refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow I will bring locusts into your country, and they shall cover the face of the land, so that no one can see the land, and they shall eat what is left to you after the hill. And they shall eat every tree of yours that grows in the field. And they shall fill your houses and the houses of all your servants and all the, of all the Egyptians, that neither your fathers nor your grandfathers have seen. From the day they came on earth to this day, and they turned and went out from Pharaoh. And Pharaoh's servants said to him, How long shall this man be said to us? Let the men go, that they may serve the Lord their God. Do you not yet understand that Egypt is ruined? So Moses and Aaron were brought back to Pharaoh, and he said to them, Go, serve the Lord your God, and which ones are to go? Moses said, He will go without young and old, well, he will go without sons and daughters, and without flocks and herds. He will hold a feast to the Lord. And he said to them, The Lord be with you. If I ever let you and your little ones go, look, you have some evil purpose in mind. No, go. The men among you and said, The Lord, for that is what you are asking. And they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. And the Lord 
sentiment to stretch over your hand over the land of Egypt for, for the locusts so, so that they may come upon the land of Egypt and eat every plant in the land. All that the hail has left. So the man stretched out his staff over the land of Egypt and the Lord brought an east wind upon the land all that day and all that night. When it was night. The east wind behind <coughs> brought the locusts. The locusts came up over all the land of Egypt and settled on the whole country. <coughs> Of Egypt, such a dense swarm of locusts as had never been before, nor ever will be again. He covered the face of the whole land, so that the land was darkened, and they ate all the plants, plants in the land, and all the fruit of the trees that the hail had left. Not a grain thing remained, neither tree nor plant or the field, through all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh hastily called Moses and Aaron and said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you, and therefore forgive my sin, please, only this once, and plead with the Lord. Lord your God, only to remove this death from me. So he went up from Pharaoh, Pharaoh and pleaded with the Lord. And the Lord turned the wind into a very strong west wind, which lifted the locusts and drove them into the Red Sea. Not a single locust was left in all the country of Egypt. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not let he did not let the people of Israel go. And the Lord said to Moses, And stretch out your hand toward heaven, that they may be darkness over the land of Egypt. And a darkness to the bee fell. So Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven. And there was pitch darkness in the land of Egypt three days. They did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place in three days. But all the people of Israel had light while they, where they lived. And then Pharaoh called to Moses and said, Go, sir, serve the Lord. Your little ones also may go with you. And then let your flocks and your herds remain behind. And Moses said, we must also let us have sacrifices and burnt offerings, that we may sacrifice to the Lord. Our livestock also must go with us, and not a hope shall be left behind. So we must take with them to serve the Lord our God. And then we do not know what we must serve the Lord, what we must serve the Lord our God. And we do not, until we were right there. But the Lord hung for us, and he would not let them go. And for us, so too. Then Pharaoh said to him, Get away from me, take care never to see my face again. For on the day you see my face, you shall die. Pharaoh said, As you say, I will not see your face again. Proverbs 8 Does not wisdom fall, does not understanding raise your voice on the heights beside the way, at the course where she takes his turn. Is at the gates in front of the town, in front of the town. And at the entrance of the portal, she cries aloud to you, O oh man, I call, I call, and my cries to the children of my house, and for once learn prudence, and for once learn sense from here, for I will speak, seek noble things, and from my lips will come what is right, for my mouth will utter truth, wickedness is an abomination to my lips. For the words of my mouth are righteous, and there is nothing twist or crooked in them. They all straight to him who understands, and am right to those who find knowledge. Take my instructions instead of silver, and nor dwell them to a spell, for wisdom is better than jewels, and all that you desire make a powerful. And I wisdom draw through, and I find no indiscretion. We'll see how the Lord is going to be find no good in the way of evil, and provide a speech I hate. I have counsel and sound wisdom, and I have insight, I have strength. My meetings right, and the Lord's decree was just. And I meet princes well, and nobles, all who govern justly. All who govern justly. I love those who love me, then those who seek me diligently find me. Letters and honor with me, enduring wealth and righteousness. My fruit is better than God, even if I go. May I yield and choice so I walk in the way of righteousness and in the paths of justice, granting an inheritance to those who love me, and then their treasuries. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of all. Ages ago I also had the first before the beginning of the earth. And there were no deaths I was brought forth. I was brought forth. Where there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains have been shaped, before the hills I was brought forth. Before he had made the earth, the earth with its fields, fields all of the first of the dust of the world. When he established the heaven, I was there. He only drew a circle on the face of the deep. When he made from the skies above, the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep. And he assigned to the seas limits so that the waters might not transgress his command. And he marked out the foundations of the work. Then I was beside him like a master workman. Now I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabitable and delighting in the children of men. And now our sons listen to me, who will last up as you keep my ways. In the instruction of be wise, do not neglect him. Blessed is the one who listens to me, working daily on my case. For whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. That he who fails to find me injures himself. All who hate me love death. 
So 101. I will sing with love and justice to you, O Lord. I will make music. I will ponder the weather's blameless. So when will you come to me? I will walk with integrity of heart within my house. I will not set before my eyes anything that is worthless. I hate the work of those who fall away. They shall not cling to me. A perverse heart shall be far from me. And I will know nothing of evil. Whoever slams his neighbor secretly, I will destroy. Whoever has a haughty, haughty look and an arrogant heart, I will not endure. I will look with favor on the faithful and that they may dwell with me. He who walks in the way that is blameless shall minister to me. No one who practices practices deceit shall dwell in my house. He, no one who utters lies shall continue before my eyes. Morning by morning I will destroy all the wicked in the land, cutting off all the evil doors from the city of the Lord. Now that's done, I should now show the Lord's prayer. It is by hand. Our Father in heaven, I love you in Your kingdom come, you be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as you should forgive our debtors. It's not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, is the power, and the glory forever. Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye.